Hello, 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 team I do love. What's poppin'? What's good in the hood? What's going on? Karibuni sana tena. This is yet another uh, message from our Seekers series. Shout out to all you Seekers out here doing the thing, being intentional. For all of you who are still on the pews, shame on you. <laughs> it's like, what else? We hope that you'll join us <laughs> on this journey. You do not want your life to be transformed? Is that what you're saying? But shout out to all you seekers. Shout out to all of you guys who are continue to press on, to push through, and continue to just be intentional about your journey of seeking after God and placing Him as the priority and seeking first. What an honor it is to be able to teach you guys and to have you as part of our community. Y'all are, th are the people that are going to make such great impact in this generation because you allow God to use you. Glory be to the living God. Now, today, as we've been going through this series, today the message that I have for you is mostly prophetic. That I want you and I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the Holy Spirit will trigger something in your heart as you hear this message. That this will be a message that will go deep into your heart. And that this, in essence, is a very prophetic word that I believe that God is speaking. And it is a message very specific to seekers. If you're a seeker, this is the word for you. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to read some portions of scripture. So we're going to spend a bit of time reading these portions of scripture. And then very quickly, I'm going to tell you what this word is saying. So I'm going to read from three different uh, parts of, of scripture, but this is a prophetic word and allow God's word to speak to us. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. I'm going to read from Isaiah 37, from 30 to 32. All right. That's the first part I'm going to read. Let me read. This year, you will eat what grows by itself, and the second year, what springs from that. But in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Once more, a remnant of the kingdom of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remnant, and out of Mount Zion, a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Now, the second part that I'm going to read is 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 to 11. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work, as it is written. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. And then finally, I want to read Genesis 26 from verse 1 to 12. Now there was a famine in the land, besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and to your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, She is my sister, because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought, The men of this place might kill me on account of Rebekah, because she is beautiful. 
When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the men might have slept with your wife and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, Anyone who harms this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. Friends, these three things that each of these scriptures I've read will tell us. And like I said, this is a message for the seekers. This is a word for the seekers, for those who have determined to go deeper, who have determined to, to, to be intentional in regards to their pursuit and their following after Christ, who have determined to take up their cross and follow him. The first thing is this from the first word, which is actually the word that God gave me in Isaiah 37, where he says to us, and this is what God is saying to us, it is time to sow. It is time to plant. You know, the thing is, is that it is unwise for you to expect a harvest where you haven't sown any seeds. And what the Lord is saying to us is that this is the year where we will harvest what we have sown. This is the promise for the seekers. This is the blessing and the anointing that will follow the seekers. That God is saying to us that this is the time to sow. This is the time to plant. This is that time. The second thing is whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Notice what it says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. It says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. I want you to understand something. That it is time to sow and it is time to plant. But I want you to understand who gives the seed to the sower. It says here that he gives seed to the sower and he increases your store of seed. God gives seed generously. And I want you to think of seed in this way. That I want you to recognize that seed is something that is so small. Like when you look at a seed, you look at that seed and, you, and you're thinking, how is this the thing that becomes something incredible? A seed is something so small, you can easily consider it to be insignificant. You can easily disregard it, disregard it because in all honesty, it's a very puny little thing. And so the thing that I want you to connect with the th first thing I told you that it is time to sow and it is time to plant. I want you to think of seeds as ideas. That there are things that God has placed in you. There's things that he's placed in your mind. There's ideas that he's giving you. There's things that he's desiring you to do. There's things that he has placed in your heart to do. And they seem, when you look at them, uh, some of these things look so small and insignificant because the reason why they look that way is because it's a seed. And so I wonder, what is the seemingly simple, small idea that God has been giving you? And what I'm here to tell you is that this is the time to plant. This is the time to plant away. This is the time to plant those seeds, to execute those things that God has placed on you to do. It is very unwise for you to expect a harvest where you have planted nothing. This is the year to plant. And the third thing is this. It says, that Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. 
I need you to understand that this is the promise that God is giving to the seeker. Is that he's saying to you, seeker, he's saying to you that in this same year, that in the same year that you plant is the same year that you will reap. And you know, that same year starts from the moment you plant. You know, that's the thing. And the thing that I need you to recognize is that what God is saying to us is that he's saying to us as the seekers, those who have chosen to go deeper, those who have chosen to be able to come into that deeper place with him, is that he's saying that this is the thing that I want you to do as you come and draw near. Is that I want you that this year is the year you sow. This is the year that you sow. This is the year that you plant. This is the year that you execute. This is the year that you do that seemingly small, insignificant thing that God has been speaking to you about. And watch what happens. And remember that whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Meaning that I truly believe that there are things that God is inspiring each and every single one of us to do. And this is the year to do them. This is the time to do them. And the whole thing about drawing near to God is that he empowers us with the faith that we need, the boldness that we need to do the thing that he's calling us to do. And so there are three things that we know that we can ask him in the face of an instruction that go and sow, go and plant, start that thing, do that thing, execute that thing, tend to that thing. So there are some things you plant, some things you sow, some things you tend to. Go tend to that thing. Go give this thing that extra. Go do this. And the thing that we need is three things. That he would first and foremost, because remember he gives seed to the sower. And he gives an abundance of that seed. The first thing is that, that he would give you the vision to see all the seeds that are around you. All the ideas, all the thoughts, all the things, all the things that he's calling you to tend to. That you begin to be awakened to them. And the second thing that you want to ask for is courage. You want to ask for the courage to be able to take that leap. And I truly believe that the whole thing about having the, 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 whole thing about the, seeker's, the seeker's heart is because God is inviting you to increase your faith. For your faith to increase. And your faith will increase in his presence. Your faith will increase when we place him first. This is what the, 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 the result is. But this whole increase in faith is not for us to do nothing. It is for us to be able to move and act in courage. And then the third thing is, is that we pray for the grace to stick with it. One of the things that I'm realizing is, is that discipline is such a big word. But really, if, in essence, what really discipline is, is consistency. That God will give us the grace to be consistent in being able to follow through with the things that he's calling us to sow. The things that he's telling us to plant. The things that he's telling us to tend to. And the whole thing about this thing, I believe, is that God is wanting to cause us. And his desire is for us to be effective witnesses. He wants us to be effective witnesses. And part of us being effective witnesses is by us literally having the manifestation of fruitfulness in our lives, both in our character and in our actions. And so it's time for us to sow. It's time for us to plant. It's time for us to execute. It's time for us to tend to. This is the moment. Because once we place God first, his desire is that we then would be that light. Because no one lights a light or a lamp to put it under a table. There's, the intention of God is not to set you ablaze so that you can just be there hiding. The purpose of him setting you ablaze is that you can be a light to the world. 
and that you can be an effective witness for his name. And this is the whole thing that he's calling us to. And so this is a word really essentially for those who have an ear to hear. Because I truly believe that whoever is listening, that God and the Holy, the, the, the Holy Spirit himself has already deposited all the seeds. And he's literally awakening you to the seeds that he has planted and he's telling you, it's time to do that thing. It's time to execute that thing. It's time to plant. It's time to and this is a great year to start. We have already begun sowing spiritually. We've already begun sowing spiritually. And now, the thing is, is that now we are going to sow in action. So the thing is, is that what seeds is God placing on your hands? Is there something he wants you to do for the kingdom? Is there an idea he wants you to execute? It is planting season. And so my question to you today is, what will you plant? And so I hope that even after this, is that you will go and spend some time seated, reflecting. Lord, what is it that you will have me do? What do you want me to plant? What are the seeds that you have placed in my hands? Open my eyes to see, Lord. Grant me the vision to see the seeds that you have placed around me. Grant me the courage to be able to sow these seeds. And with the courage, give me the grace to do it. This is planting season. It is time to sow seekers. And so today I want to encourage you. And this is very much a prophetic word. That's why I read the scriptures. There's no, we're not going to go into deep whatever. This is a very simple thing. And we're saying, he who has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. That this is time. It is time for you to sow. It is time for you to plant. It is time for you to do that seemingly insignificant thing that God is calling you to do. This is the year to plant. This is the year to do. This is the year to start. This is the year to tend to. This is the year to up. Up your game. This is the year to go deeper. This is the year to sow. So we are sowing spiritually, but God is also calling us to say, we will, I want you to go and start sowing all these other things that I've begun to implant in your heart to do. It's planting season. It's sowing season. And in this very same year, he's promised to us with the zeal, it says, that he will come with. He has promised us that in the same year, we will reap a huge harvest to the glory and honor of the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Spend some time after this just to reflect upon this, to think through it, sit with it, talk to God about it, talk to God and allow him to open your eyes to the seeds, the many seeds that he has placed around you and ask him to give you the courage to act, ask him to give you the grace to sustain and it's time for us to plant seekers. Glory to God. This is, not, this, is, this is what we'll see at the very end, is that we will see for whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but whoever sows generously will also reap generously. It's sowing season. Glory be to God. Amen. That's the only message I had for you guys today um, that you can sit with and, 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 and immerse yourselves in for today. Um, and for the rest of the week, um, God bless you guys. And again, like always, I never like to finish without first and foremost speaking to anyone who wants to know Jesus. This message that you just had was very much for seekers and God is inviting all of us to be seekers. He's inviting all of us to come to faith in him. He's inviting all of us to his free gift of salvation that he has given to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And the thing is, is that the whole journey and this whole journey is about giving us a rich and satisfying life in him. This is the heritage of our God and how he cares to deal with his children. And so I want to invite you into a relationship with God. That this relationship of faith in Christ Jesus gives you the right to become his child. The right to sit at his table. 
the right to be a to, to be a recipient of the rich and satisfying life that he has prepared for those who love him and the journey begins by us putting our faith in Jesus Christ and so I want to invite you to a relationship with the Lord Jesus and if you're interested in doing that I want you to pray this prayer with me I want you to say Lord Jesus I thank you that you died for me and I thank you that you rose again that I may have a new life I accept your forgiveness and I declare that you are my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life, change me, transform me, renew me, and use me. Fill me with your spirit. Amen, amen, amen. If you pray that prayer with us, hit us up down there. There's a WhatsApp that you can hit us up on, join our community, and we'll be able to walk this journey with you. There's many things that we do in this ministry that we can be able to walk through this journey together, that you can be able to grow in your faith in Christ. And so for any person that's watching right now, if there's any sickness in your body, I want us to pray. Just place your hand wherever it is that you have that sickness or that pain, or whatever that discomfort is, and let us just pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we speak to that sickness and we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you have no authority and no place in that person's life, and we declare uh, your healing uh, virtue upon them. We ask that your Holy Spirit would come and bring healing to every single person that is in need of healing at this very moment and that they would experience full renewal and revival in their body, in their mind, and wherever it is that they are ailing, to the glory and honor of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that you are healed in Jesus' name. Father, thank you so much for the week ahead. We thank you that you're speaking to us and that you're instructing us and, and, and inspiring us that this is the year we plant, that this is the year we sow, that this is the year that we will see you do amazing things in our midst for the things that we will sow, we will also reap. We thank you, Holy King, for this great, great, great blessing that you have given to us in Christ Jesus, that as we come closer to you and as, as we set our priorities straight, that you are also wanting to use us for the glory and honor of your holy name. So we thank you and we bless you, O King. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Listen, if this message blessed you, please be sure to share it with someone whom you love. Share it with a friend, a colleague, anyone. And then also, listen, support us. Support this ministry so that we can be able to make more dope content and be able to spread this message of the kingdom to as many people as possible. And then, make sure that you subscribe. Sawa, subscribe. Subscribe, wherever the button, subscribe, subscribe. God bless you guys.